Hello, welcome to the Habituation Room Podcast live stream. It's a stream. It's a what? What is that? Why is there a graphic up in front of my face? Um, what's going on, everybody? Welcome. Thank you so much for being here. Um, that was a little preview of the fact that we are going to be talking about uh, the founder of Libs of TikTok. If you don't know who that is, Oh man, you're about to get your cherry popped. The one you were hoping that you would just keep intact forever, which is knowing about the most cretinous of our humankind and makes you feel like, you know what? Maybe walruses should just rule the earth. You know what I'm saying? Like, are we better than a walrus? No, okay? They're actually doing real things. They're sinking yachts, all right? What have you done? Um... This is a pro sinking yacht show. Uh, I am Francesca Fiorentini. So happy to have you here. We're going to talk about so many things. Lance of the Surfs is here for the very first time. So excited to uh, have him on for the show. We will be talking about Libs of TikTok founder Chaya Rychik. We're also going to be talking about uh, Air Force Service member Aaron Bushnell who self-immolated in protest of the genocide in Gaza. Um, just an incredible story, and uh, we'll dig into all of that. Uh, and the media's coverage of it, or sort of um, lack thereof. Uh, we're also going to be talking um, for our interview uh, with Moji Alawod L. And I hope I'm pro pronouncing uh, her name right. But Moji it works with Abortion AF. Um, and co-host the podcast Feminist Buzzkills. They follow all kinds of, and they have been doing work around uh, anti-abortion psychos. They co consistently counter-protest them. They've also been doing incredible uh, clinic support work and just broadly um, keeping us all up to date with the latest in the fight for reproductive rights. So if you don't know Abortion AF, obviously uh, Liz Winstead, who's been on this show, um, it has is also a is the founder of it and um, co-hosts Feminist Buzzkill. Super glad that Moji's on today because we're going to be talking about the Alabama Supreme Court ruling and IVF and what all of this means and and how abortion rights are playing into, of course, the election. So stick around for that. And then finally, honoring those of us who fail to honor Black History Month. Uh, or who forgot how, and um, especially when it comes to uh, just not being racist for like a month. Just try it. Uh, presidential candidate, presidential hopeful, Donald Trump uh, had some things to say in front of a bunch of black conservatives, and we will dig into that. And explicitly the, oh God, the hoops being made, or the excuses being made and the hoops being jumped through to make excuses for that POS. But if you are here right now, let's get into it. Doing the things, okay? We're liking the stream. We're sharing the stream. We're subscribing if we're not subscribed. We are leaving a five-star review on whatever podcast app you are listening to this with. Um, and remember that the best way to support this show, yes, become a member on YouTube. Yes, become a member on Twitch. But patreon.com slash habituation room is where it's at. Um, that is where we get the best little split skis, just like financially, you know. Um, and you support this up until now ad free show, but you get the show ad free. So that's number one. You get discounts on merch, 20% off all merch, bituationroom.com, uh, stickers, t shirts, tote bags, requests for mugs, and franny packs coming. 
discounts on the American Prospect magazine and access to the AMA, which I'm doing for the first time in months, tomorrow at 1 p.m. Pacific, 4 p.m. Eastern. Got great questions there. Um, so send them to bitiation at gmail.com or reply on YouTube. Or if you're a patron, we got a whole little community chat happening. It's very fun. Um, if you want to tip the show, TBR-Live on Venmo, TBR Live on Cash App. And remember, I'm going to be live in Sacramento with my husband, uh, Matt Lieb. Yes, it's a wild night out with my husband. Um, <laughs> we're going to be doing stand-up at the uh, Sacramento Punchline. So get tickets March 17th at 7 p.m. And no, my voice is not fully healed. And yes, I'm still going through puberty. <clears throat> I feel like I'm at the, t I'm like a, I feel like I'm solidly 15 today. So, you know, getting older, growing up. And with that, let's get into it. This is What Are You Bitching About? So I'm bitching about something that I think I've spoken about on the show before, but it has been put into very stark terms by two stories that broke this week, um, which is the media coverage of Israel's assault on the people of Gaza, the Palestinian people. And I think one of the biggest stories coming out of this genocide, uh, other than oh my God, it's a genocide in front of our eyes and no, we're not stopping it. And no, the Biden administration is completely not serious about stopping it. Just watched a, a presser with uh, John Kirby today. They have no idea how they're going to prevent an attack on Rafa. They have literally no clue. Um, no closer to any ceasefire agreements, despite whatever Biden has said with an ice cream cone in his hand. However, the biggest story other than that is the way that depending on who you are and what media you watch or listen to, depending on whether you're on TikTok, whether you're on Twitch, whether you're on YouTube, whether you're on Instagram, versus if you are a loyal MSNBC or mainstream media CNN news watcher, it will drastically impact how you think about this war. One of these platforms, social media platforms, are giving us direct on the ground heinous images that we cannot get out of our brains every single day. And the other is a very buttoned up, incredibly skewed pro-Israel um, a a, like account, a very elitist, out of touch, sanitized account of what is actually a genocide. And largely the divide is generational, right? If you think that Israel's in the right, you might just be old. You might also be a Zionist. You might be Joe Biden. Um, but this is going to have ramifications on our generations for year, generations to come, right? So many years to come. We will remember how the mainstream news would not show us these images, did not actually listen to the people on the ground, did take, you know, uh, pre presidents from Israel and prime ministers and spokespeople at their word and at face value and did not actually platform some of the people who are living through this genocide as we speak. And to that end, The Intercept and Adam Johnson, who's been on this program before, did a study of the way that the media has been covering uh, Gaza and sees, and this is a graph, and if you're listening, it is a graph that shows the amount of casualties, the number of dead Palestinians as it rises and rises and rises, right? And then a correlation to how many times It is mentioned by mainstream outlets. I believe they looked at NBC, New York Times, um, and the LA Times. So, so I believe it was mostly print media. So there's, a, there's basically fewer mentions of Palestinians dead as more Palestinians are killed. On top of that, what kind of language are we seeing, right? On social media, we might talk about genocide. We might talk about uh, assaults on Gaza. We might not talk about it as a war, right? When you look and you see mainstream news outlets, what Johnson has found is that words like slaughter, massacre, and horrific were disproportionately used to describe Israeli deaths. So you have this matchup between the LA Times, New York Times, oh, Washington Post was the additional one, excuse me. And you have like 60 uses of the word slaughter to one use of the word slaughter when it comes to Palestinians. 38 uses of the word horrific, four uses of the word horrific to describe the killing of Palestinians. 120 uh, times using the word massacre in relation to Israelis, but four times using 
to Palestinians. I mean, we're not even talking about the the G word here, of course. And you know, you're not going to be seeing genocide being thrown around um, without like some of these crazy young people think it's a genocide. Um, also nations like South Africa. But so that I think is what I'm bitching about. But in relationship to that, in addition to that, we now know that one of the so-called journalists who was responsible for this critical news coverage in the New York for the New York Times um, actually might be a little more biased than we all thought. Um, so we have talked about the New York Times as like embedded bias in the ways obviously they humanize Israelis more than Palestinians. But there's this woman, I, I think her name is Anat Schwartz. Um, I'm sorry about her first name, but her last name is Schwartz. And she began reporting for the Times in November. Her stories focus on Israel's response to the October 7th attacks. Her most prominent piece was bylined, a co-bylined article detailing the sexual violence allegedly committed by Hamas during the raids. The story draw, drew international criticism from staffers and led the Times to pull an episode of the Daily Podcast on the original story according to The Intercept. So again, remember this is when there were like these incredible accounts supposedly of mass rape and how Hamas uses mass rape um, as a weapon of war. And Schwartz was one of the authors on this. Well, the Daily didn't, they scrapped their episode about this particular, about this idea of mass rapes because they actually couldn't corroborate some of what had been already reported on. Then the Times does another piece actually saying that, okay, out of the six witnesses, half of them are pretty like shoddy and there aren't, there isn't any forensic evidence. We've talked about how little forensic evidence was cut, was actually culled in the wake of October 7th. I'm not saying it didn't happen, but there are a lot of holes in the mass rapes story that the New York Times peddled and Schwartz was one of the people that peddled them. But on top of that, there's now been reporting and the New York Times is looking into it that Schwartz was liking tweets on Twitter that were incredibly well, anti-Palestinian, Islamophobic, awful. Uh, her most egregious like came from a post by David Wertheim, who wrote shortly after October 7th that should Hamas not return the hostages to Israel, Israel should turn the Gaza Strip into a slaughterhouse, according to an auto-translation of the Hebrew Post. Wertheim also advocated for Israel to, quote, violate any norm on the way to victory. Well, they have, buddy. So, again, we've spoken on this show on our bonus episodes uh, about the Zaka group. We also spoke about the editor of the New York Times, Joe Kahn, um, who's the son of Leo Khan, who was on the board of an organization called Camera that deliberately polices mainstream news outlets for the kinds of coverage that they give to Israel-Palestine and making sure they never paint Palestinians in a humanizing light, that they are con they always have a pro-Israel bent. So we're going to talk more about the Zaka group. A good friend, Arun Gupta, a journalist who's been on the show, he's doing a, a, a multi-part investigation into the Zaka group. Again, the foot, there you have it. We have reason to not believe mainstream news. We have reason to believe they're not just biased, Islamophobic. Um, they don't just call Palestinian death tragic, but they ultimately hire people that, holy sh shit. If the shoe were on the other foot, guys, and it was someone who was like a Palestinian or pro-Palestinian author who was liking tweets about, I don't know, white, even if it were just like some lightweight stuff, those people have already been fired. So just incredible. And uh, we will see what happens with Schwartz. Before I bring my guest in, guys, very excited, very exciting to, uh, to announce one of our first advertisers on the Bituation Room ever. We're talking five years into this, five years in, one of our first advertisers, Sunset Lake CBD. That's right, people. Yes. Uh, hell yeah. This was so wonderful. Sunset Lake CBD um, is a Vermont-based, vertically integrated farm that grows, harvests, processes, and ships all of its organic, pesticide-free craft CBD products, tinctures, gummies, smokables, fudge, coffee, because apparently if you drink coffee, but you get like two buzz CBD, mellows you out. Um, also salve. Um, so like you guys know, I have like major shoulder and arm pain. So I've been using the salve and I've been using the tinctures for like, I think since for about a year now. And 
Let me tell you, as someone, and I've said this before, massive anxiety before I go to sleep, cannot fall asleep, uh, started happening around the pandemic. Motherhood made it way worse and it could persist until now. But I rely on Sunset Lake CBD, specifically um, the Good Night Oil, which just dropped, y'all. Good Night Oil has CBD and CBN, which is basically old THC. <laughs> I don't mean to say that bad. And it's incredible. It's like zero. I used to be a stoner, but like it's like zero psychotropic. So like there's no psychoactive or psychotropic. I don't know what it is. I'm crushing this ad read. Um, there's no like psychoactive properties. It's just incredibly calming. And it's if you guys have tried natural sleep remedies, there's always it's always like, oh, this one helps your body and this one helps your mind. CBD truly helps both. Um, and this good night oil, I'm telling you, is wonderful. Also, Matt Lieb started taking the Focus Functional Mushroom CBD gummies that has like lion's mane and cordyceps, which I guess doesn't turn you into one of the zombies from The Last of Us. And he was like immediately calm, but could also work. My dude chews nicotine gum, okay? Like, and he was like, oh, th these are good. These are really good. So, sunsetlakecbd.com use coupon code frantifa that's right f r a n t i f a at the checkout for a 20% off discount you also get discounts if you subscribe i'm telling you y'all the, the company's good the product is good and also they donate like tens of thousands of dollars to planned parenthood um an organization called give directly that puts money directly in the pockets of people suffering poverty just excellent all around sunset lake cbd coupon code Frantifa, so happy that you guys are with us. And with that, let me bring in for the rest of the show, host of the YouTube channel, Twitch stream and podcast and media venture, The Surfs. Please welcome Lance. Lance. So much. Lance. You, you rocked that. Out. Well done. Oh, thank you. Um, Lance, tell me about yourself. Who are you? Uh, I'm, well, first and foremost, very happy to be in a safe space because you've pledged uh, loyalty to our walrus overlords. So that's good. <laughs> I was a little worried about that, but all hail walrus. Uh, we're, we're team walrus around my part, so I'm glad. Really? I didn't just, so I like happened to name the mammal that. No, no, I'm being silly. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I think, I think you meant, I think you meant to say orcas. It's the orcas that are taking down yachts right now, isn't okay, it? Okay, but are there was. also doing it? Well, like a couple years ago, there was a walrus who did like get. Uh, murdered, um, extrajudicial oh. killing. But yeah, he was like, or she, I forgot, um, they were sitting on a bunch of yachts, I think in Norway, and oh. uh, would not leave. Yeah, it was fun. This was, I think that walrus inspired the rest of the sea creatures, but. Oh, okay, fair enough. All right. Um, so, so you're yeah. in a safe space, but you also have the surfs and you've been running this stream for how long? Uh, the show as it is now, I think probably like, th I want to say like three or four years, but, uh, started out like, uh, most, uh, worthless humans as a podcaster and then, uh, was doing podcasting to YouTubing and then, uh, made some YouTube documentaries on, uh, Joe Rogan before that was a thing. I was one of the first to ever call him, uh, uh a poo-poo and then, uh, <laughs> Ooh, um, a poo-poo. I, I, I went hard. What can I say? You know, just, uh. Uh, right out of the gates but my channel got taken down and then when our channels got taken down it strides and affected us because we got our youtubes deleted and then majority report and all these other big names were like oh this is pretty sad the surfs you should go check them out and then youtube reversed it and then we've been kind of i don't know successful ever since kind of thing yeah. oh wow so you just created drama for yourself i see how you like manufactured <laughs> your success <laughs> <laughs> I wish I planned that out. I'd feel so much smarter because, like, I was <laughs> gutted. I, 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 when I woke up and I, I didn't know like YouTube would do that. I didn't any warnings. There wasn't anything. It was just like your channel has been deleted. I was like, wait, what? Like, oh god! Like, like you got no, no recourse, no nothing you can do about it. And so, yeah, it's, uh, it's pretty messed up. But I think they're getting better. You can't just like mass flag as easily anymore. But yeah. Well, I know. I did just say the word like the letter CBD together and over and yeah. over again. And so we'll see if I get demonetized for that. So, okay. So, and so you're here now and now you're in my space, which I hope is safe for you, but it will be even better if you tell us what you're bitching about on this fine Tuesday. 
What am I bitching about? Uh, today I've been bitching about ice cream and, uh, you know, the, the president, Mr. Brandon, and his uh, his appearance Same on the Tesla Myers. Yeah, well, I I know the, the ice cream thing is getting a lot of press right now because, like, obviously it's just a very surreal moment. Like, I really liked your, the way you were describing what's going on in terms of, like, reporting and manufacturing consent and stuff like that because it is just utterly bizarre sometimes, like, the black mirror of it all to be staring, you know, at what is, like, the president eating, I don't know, probably like a keto raisin or some weird flavor. And, and then as he's, do, as he's doing that, like as he's like the thing, he's like, he's talking about a ceasefire, about an ongoing genocide. And and it, like there's such a disconnect, you know, where it just feels surreal a lot of the time. Like, is, is yeah. this real life? Is this happening right now? Yeah, um, he was he was eating about to about to take a bite. I mean, you know, he had like the bad dream I always have. Do you ever have dreams where you're like about to eat a delicious thing? Um, and as soon as you like are open your mouth, like you wake up from your dream and you're like, damn it, you know, or like something happens interrupted. Or, that or happened to him. Yeah, yeah, that happened to him, but like genocide where <laughs> like he, you know, no tried kidding. to enjoy some ice cream. But yeah, he he it is such dissonance because he's campaigning right now. And so mm -hmm. he's gotta make all the uh the down home stop pit stops and uh and then then there's this massive massacre occurring at the same time. And like I said, John Kirby today in a White House presser, like no follow up on that promise that Biden said to the reporter as he was about to eat his ice cream that there would be a ceasefire in a week, basically. Mm -hmm. Nothing like Kirby was like, I don't know. You know, the president says stuff. You know, I'm not prepared to say. Then they said, is there an exit plan for the millions of people who are trapped in Rafa? Haven't seen one. Nope, we haven't. I mean, I we we try. I don't. I, it, and you're just like, have you guys? How have you guys not gotten better at this? You know, either yeah, it lying or it trying to stop the death. Yeah, which I, I mean, I've seen a lot of people say that you can't like. What what can the president really do? And I was like, well, I mean, he does have, and Trump kind of showed this, the largest access to media I think of any human being on the planet. Like he can literally just say, I want to say a word now, and then all these cameras will show. Up, and then they'll broadcast them on TV for free. So at any point, he has the power. I'm serious. Like even if he doesn't want to pass legislation, my hands are tied. Congress. I I can only bypass them when I send weapons. But if that's the case, fine. You can go on a camera any single day, and everyone will listen to you. And you can say ceasefire now, or or the United States is demanding a ceasefire. Anything you know, remotely close. But that notwithstanding, like him, I I I was obviously just kind of upset about the the ice cream thing because there was no details, like you said. There's no like, hey, this this is going to be a temporary ceasefire for again hostage exchange. Uh, you right. know, uh, maybe food or, or aid. I then saw this morning the interview that he'd done on Seth Meyers, where he's saying that I'm a Zionist and that, uh, you know, if there if Israel didn't exist, there would be no safe place in the world for Jews to be. Which, again, as the president of the United States, like I know I don't know if this is controversial, but I think Jews should be safe everywhere or anywhere. The same thing with Palestinians, right? Like, just I, I know spicy takes when when I get onto to the show, but like you're not. Shouldn't that be what you advocate for? I think all people should be safe everywhere. Like that's not, it's not, it's not like you know we have to have like I I distinctly didn't want to see the president talk about necessity for an ethno state or an apartheid state in order to say that this is how Jewish people will be safe. I think that's say like, it's deeply fucked so up. So tell me because I mean, we haven't pulled the clip, yeah. but tell me that he he reiterated what he's been saying. So no movement on that. Just even though he incurred a tons of I, criticism when he first said that he said that to seth myers yet again yeah that's well that's the clip that's coming out i don't know the timeline between if seth myers and the ice cream thing is filmed before they did their interview but that's like now that clip is pretty much circulating today um yeah I, like it's the that speech you gave at the start it, it i think a lot of people are having this moment and the democrats and the democratic party don't recognize this disconnect between not just young people but just people who are now ingesting information online as opposed to constantly just like like take the second Iraq war i i don't know if you're as old as i am like i'm really really old i i was like you know oh, I'm politically, okay i was i was politically activated around then let's say like i was i was you know yeah. involved i was protesting and stuff like that and what you got on television compared to what was actually happening was worlds different than right now every day it would be like cnn and someone with a microphone just being like our brave soldiers look here and like here they are waiting and like you never saw death uh, body parts exploding dead babies you never you never saw this right and now kids every day when you log on to the internet or you just go and buy a computer just all you see in, in like 4k broadcast to you is like, collectively making everybody like unbelievably sad and depressed and, and hopeless and all that kind of yeah. feeling 
and they don't recognize this disconnect that you know the manufacturing consent moment of a lot of people where it's like they're lying to us like they're yes. the, the the version of events that they're saying out loud is not what i see with my own eyes every yeah. day and keep doing this like well we're, we're using strong language and uh did you know that the president called him uh i believe an ass or an asshole in private so there's that you know be, be excited like I, yeah i mean exactly but people i feel like he they say that almost he said that like as a buddy <laughs> he's an asshole here have some more weapons right? you know hey, this guy yeah. <laughs> he's an asshole he roofies uh, women uh, here here's here's roofies I'll, I'll bypass congress for that asshole yeah sure. yeah exactly no <laughs> and and i think that to your point about you know being radicalized by this moment and young people specifically like imagine if when we were marching against the iraq war we were like intently following you know teens in baghdad streaming as like american missiles rain down on their homes and communities as like u.s service members like like bust down their doors like f terrified in the like we would have I, I, I like I can't imagine what that would have done to our brains like and I had been organizing for months ahead of the actual invasion, you know, trying to humanize Iraqis trying to get and it's like and we didn't have the live streams, the videos, the Instagram and whatnot then and it's just like so it's amazing because you are waiting for the moment for like you know, everyone I was saying this on leftist mafia, which I was on that you, you are part of as well that like everyone loves to, you know, be like, what are the kids into? Like, oh my God, what conversations are they having? And then when it's like, oh no, we're having the conversation about like occupation and colonialism. Everyone's like, oh, yeah. oh we, don't, we don't want to have that conversation. Let's not. <laughs> let's, it's complicated. I hope let's talk about like middle yeah. parts and like uh, bringing back like, uh, you know, boot cut jeans or whatever the fuck they're doing. Um, <laughs> yes, but we, let's get into it. Uh, so much happened this week. Uh, only two things that we're gonna shake down out of this tree. Right now, this is the week where. So speaking of this moment radicalizing young people, um, this was the week where 25-year-old Air Force service member Aaron Bushnell of San Antonio, Texas, lit himself on fire outside of the Israeli embassy in D.C. in protest of the U.S.'s complicity in genocide. Um, I do not want to show the video, but I will explain and we'll talk about what happened. So this is Aaron, um, a photo of him. Um, and this is what happened. He live streamed himself actually on Twitch and he begins by introducing himself. He says, my name is Aaron Bushnell. I'm an active duty member of the U.S. Air Force and I will no longer be complicit in genocide. I'm about to engage in, ex in an extreme act of protest, but compared to what people have been experiencing in Palestine at the hands of their colonizers, it's not extreme at all. This is what our ruling class has decided will be normal. Um, the video shows Aaron continuing to film as he walks to the gate of the Israeli embassy in D.C., puts down his phone, douses himself in a flammable liquid, and sets himself alight, shouting, Free Palestine, several times. After he collapses, police officers who had been watching the situation unfold run into the frame, one with a fire extin extinguisher and another with a gun. The officer continues pointing the gun at Aaron for over 30 seconds as Aaron lies on the ground burning. And this is a photo. Uh, there's It's blurred out. But this is the officer just pointing a gun at a man just completely engulfed in flames. Ridiculous. Like, what? Are, like, OK, we can put that we can put that reaction aside. But more about Aaron. Um, this is what he wrote on Facebook. Uh, just hours before, he wrote, many of us ask ourselves, what would I do if I was alive during slavery or the Jim Crow South or apartheid? What would I do if my country was committing genocide? The answer is you're doing it right now. Um, Lance, you're I mean, I don't mean to kick it to you immediately, but but what were your thoughts when you when you saw this story break? Um I saw probably like the series of the most cruel and worst takes appear immediately right mm. after the story it was like an ongoing story, especially online. And then I didn't think that this would be something immediately that would be weaponized the next day. I mean, I should 
it's pretty typical to see people being like, well, now the left has lost their minds. They're advocating for people to do this or encouraging this, or this is them encouraging people to commit self-harm or anything of that nature. And that's utterly absurd. First off, I think it's doing a huge disservice to someone who made a very clear statement, right? That this was, this is the reason I'm doing this action. I'm going to say this, I'm going to live stream it so no one can deny this is the reason why I'm doing this. And I'm going to scream words out loud as I'm doing this act, right? Mm -hmm. Because this act is so horrifying, that's why people are reacting in the way they did to it right it's not to celebrate anyone causing self-harm or hurting themselves or bringing themselves alive that's not the purpose it's like this is so shocking and striking it's why it's been done as a form of protest before as an extreme form of protest yes. and yes certainly i'm sure every single person uh, in your audience knows that like if you are having troubles with mental health or stuff like that please uh, access the multiple resources in your city town or area that you have access to you know me in Canada, there's there's phone numbers that you can access to, uh, and and please go do that. But that conversation never comes up in regards to uh, other examples. Like people pulled up cheat here, pulled up a picture of Hillary Clinton holding up a photo of a 16 year old who burnt themselves lives in protest, but that was for a different conflict. There's of course the person who did it uh, to protest the Vietnam War, and there was no like immediate. Well, we should be talking about mental health and whether or not we're celebrating people. Right. Else. Nobody told the the Buddhist monk who they he was protesting. The treatment of Buddhists in in Vietnam, Tik Quang Duck in 1963, in that incredible photo of him, no one was like, "Oh, he was just mentally disturbed." He was a monk, the most like arguably mentally secure and sound. Dude meditates all day, you know, mm -hmm. like that's the deal. And he was like, "No, was, this is a protest." Flinch or anything, he like that apparently was like it was jaw dropping to people to witness, and that like they couldn't believe he just. He stood there completely, like without any kind of signs of pain or stuff. I'm like, that right. is obviously a level of uh, I don't know even I don't even know what's going on there. That's all I can of do. sacrifice, right? And I think that is what's really important. Like when I saw this story, I think two things. I did. I do feel like he made an incredible point. I don't know if I would call him a hero because I don't. Again, there is something about like valorizing, like this. I, I'm not, it's not bad to valorize it, but you know, he did something incredibly courageous and kill. He died for this cause. That's what he did, you know? And so that's my first instinct is that he's courageous. And my second instinct is I hope that we, that number one, that it breaks through. And number two, that also that we can, we can move this, I think, past the point of desperation and into a point of action, meaning, and, and, and I know, look, this is, I'm not going to judge his particular action, but I do want for, for all of us to actually figure the hell out how we turn this into a movement inside the armed forces, outside of the armed forces, like to actually bring about an end to this genocide, you know? So, so again, my, m mine isn't, I'm not scolding nor valorizing anyone. Um, but I do think what he did was incredibly brave and it did break through mainstream media did have to cover it. And that was also thanks to an, an independent journalist, Talia Jane, who ripped the video before it had a ch chance to be taken down by Twitch. Um, and then it was covered. Here's uh, Andrea Mitchell. And again, sort of in the same breath, immediately talking about, you know, mental health. So take a look. Yesterday, 25-year-old Aaron Bushnell of San Antonio, Texas, the active duty airman in the U.S. Air Force who set himself on fire outside the Israeli embassy in an apparent protest against the Israel-Hamas war, has died. That identification made by Metropolitan Police here. Bushnell filmed his own self-immolation on his cell phone, yelling, free Palestine, before collapsing to the ground outside the embassy. He was rushed to the hospital for treatment, but later succumbed to his injuries. And if you or someone you know is in crisis, call or text 988 to reach the suicide aid. You know who's in crisis? Um, the people of Gaza are in crisis. Like... The, in the good on Andrea Mitchell for accurately reporting that it was a protest, but also in the immediate answer isn't just a suicide hotline. There was a purpose to this particular, you know, I think dying was secondary to making his voice heard. Right. Mm. Um, 
as morbid as that might sound to some people. And he also wasn't the first person to do this. In December, a woman also self-immolated. She apparently has survived, although sadly we have not heard about her story until this story broke. These are two people. Um, lastly on this, though, Lance, is that there could be an angle here around how much someone like Aaron Bushnell, an Air Force service member, was involved in either aiding and abetting, you know, Israeli genocide. Um, this was Clint, Ken Klippenstein reported for The Intercept uh, in January um, that the administration has gone to lengths to conceal the nature of its support for the Israeli military, but the Pentagon quietly tapped a so-called Tiger team to facilitate weapons assistance to Israel, and it also declined to reveal which weapon systems it was providing and which quantities, blah, blah, blah. But on top of that, and more relevant, um, on November 21st, the U.S. Air Force issued deployment guidelines for officers, including intelligence engagement officers headed to Israel. Experts say that a team of targeting officers like this would be used to provide satellite intelligence to the Israelis for purpose of offensive targeting. So, again, and we know from, like, whistleblowers who've done drone programs or, or, or re resistors or conscientious objectors in wars past that often these covert operations... Are not we're not talking about them you know we're not you know the idea that the air force was involved in helping israel find targets inside of gaza that's not openly discussed so who knows what aaron bushnell himself was called upon to do who knows what he did he said i won't be complicit in this we don't know if his role as an air force service member actually uniquely implicated him in more of a direct role in this genocide Final thoughts on this? Um, I, I don't know. This is just breaking, but Ken just put out another story where I think he had done research into his background. He apparently worked in IT and did a lot of kind of like information and data filtering. So uh, Ken explains it really uh, succinctly where he puts it that this is usually unsung quote unquote heroes of some kind of aspect of the military apparatus who are basically responsible for ingesting and filtering through vast amounts of information. They usually have access to lots of information related to things like horrifying atrocities, war crimes, and stuff like that. Uh, while at the same time, they're not directly involved in kind of like the boots on the ground drill sergeant, like you've got to basically have one way of looking at the world and that is take orders, right? right? And so that creates a very unique situation where you have an individual who may become radicalized within the Imperial Corps or whatever you want to call it, within the actual military industrial complex working within it, similar to how people like Edward Snowden, for example, uh, became big leakers of information in a very similar position with inside the system itself. Right. Or Chelsea Manning. Yes, um, exactly. Yeah. And so many, um, and so many, yeah. And, and again, drone operators and especially in, in IT and in tech, like you have access, like you're saying to so much information and you're also called upon to like get coordinates on so-called terrorists. Although who knows, given the kill rate that Israel's got. So, but thank you for bringing that up. Yeah. Um, everybody check that, uh, Check out a new piece by Ken Klippenstein, what Aaron Bushnell did in the military. So he goes into it a little bit more in depth. Mm -hmm. But like, again, and but anyway, hey, rest in peace. That's let's leave it at that. And um, and let's stop this before we move. on. I mean, not before we move on. We have to move on quickly. Um, actually, you know what? Let's switch it up. Let's switch it up because I don't want to make emoji wait in the wings let's save our horrible person for the rest of the show and let's bring her in now um because uh i'm i don't want to keep people waiting um so let's see wait hang on wait, do i have your bio emoji reproductive rights activist on the marketing team at abortion access front and co-host of feminist buzzkills please welcome emoji alawode l Hello. Hi, Hi. Hi, Lance. How are you? Hello. Oh, my goodness. I realized I like forgot to bring my mic up close. Does this help? Yes. Yeah. I think you sound so. great. You look yeah. great. You've Thank got you. an ab abortion necklace Me in too. Barbie font. Yes, that's exactly Hell what yeah. it is. Um, <laughs> well, we why don't we just get right to it? Because I feel like the other like the one of the biggest things happening right now is Republicans are scrambling. Mm. Um, they're freaking out because of this Alabama Supreme Court decision that ruled that uh, embryos in, you know, uh, that are frozen could be considered children, people, and that anyone who mishandles them 
could be liable for um, uh, murder effectively. Um, yeah. And, or, or I guess a uh, wrongful death of a minor. So just like, yeah, child killing. Cool. Um, because of course, and Moji, before we dig into maybe this case, the idea that the anti-choice movement would go for IVF and fertilize embryos or fertilize eggs was kind of always like on the back burner. Like maybe they will. I don't know. And then it was always pointed out. You know, I, I remember pointing it out. It was like, oh, are, so are they going to come for embryos? And then I think folks who are more in it, like yourself, were like, yeah, no, no. Absolutely. They, yeah. They on the list. So tell us about kind of the origin. Like the, did this surprise you? I guess is what I'm saying. I mean, it's sort of like the Dobbs decision, which, you know, <clears throat> which is what basically overturned Roe. It was it hurt when it happened, but is it surprising for anyone who's paying attention? Absolutely not. This is in fact fully part of the playbook. So this, be, re, still reading it where it's like, oh wait, Alabama has decided that extra uterine embryos are children makes no sense. But it, it really is, this is not about children because that's not a child, right? If, if Alabama actually cared about children, they would have probably ro more robust paternity care. They would have a whole lot of other supports that would actually make children live better lives in Alabama. But this is about control, and this is also about establishing that fetuses or extrauterine fetuses or basically anything that may have two, have a sperm and an egg come together and call itself a something is a person, and therefore it's one of the steps necessary to essentially outlaw any form of abortion. So right. I don't know even so much if it's about IVF per se, but it definitely is about control and it definitely all boils back to making sure that we understand that the fetus's rights are, are far superior of any person who can get pregnant. Right. Absolutely. And, and the case that brought this on, from my understanding, is that someone accident, like mishandled some embryos, they dropped, were destroyed, and the parents of those embryos um, were pissed and like sued for it. And I, I guess under the wrongful death of a minor, which s now seems like they're trying to walk back. Like they're like, this isn't about, you know, broader, you know, whether or not this embryo is a person. This is just, we just want to be, you know, be made whole by this obvious mistake. But the Supreme Court was like, no, 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 that's a kid. And in response, Alabama's now shut down, I guess, three IVF clinics yeah. um, or facilities. Uh, I say clinics as if they're still abortion clinics operating in Alabama. But yeah, do you know or can you tell us at all about like the state of reproductive rights in Alabama? I mean, I'm assuming this is we're just like we're on a six week ban, complete. Oh, ban. no, they're not a six week. They're a, they're a full total ban. There's a full total ban in Alabama. Um, I was trying to figure out what their exceptions are. I would hope there's a life to the mother, but we haven't seen the the lines of like Texas women who have not been able to have miscarriage management come from Alabama. And I'm, that's probably just a little bit more research I need to do, but it's a full total ban. Yeah. Also, um, which six Alabama, weeks is also a full ban. I mean, let's six weeks is a full ban pretty much. Yeah. Uh, you can slip by that if you're really diligent, but most people it's a full week. It's a full ban. Right. But Alabama also criminalizes pregnant people or miscarrying people at a rate like more than double anyone else in the country. So Alabama is really all about fetuses and less about people who carry children, right? That's yeah. not anything that they have, they they, they arrest people, they uh, put people in jail if they feel like they're like using drugs while pregnant. This is a thing about Alabama. They really do fetishize fetuses there. And so this is again, not surprising. And this is again, about control and not really about mm -hmm. a child, you know? I feel the, like I keep repeating the same things, but it's like, no, it's terrible in Alabama. It's not a good place. And I also, a, friend, a colleague said this earlier today. She was like, has anyone checked in on these families, right, who, who like just wanted to be made whole and are now looking up like, oh, the, the mechanism that we wanted to use to like extend our families is now possibly not available to us and other families like us who can't access this care in this right. state. Right. Right. Yeah. Um, from what I saw they are there, like, we did not mean this to spin, like, get this out of control. Um, but I guess too late, and maybe we were already headed here once you enshrine, like, the rights of the unborn or whatever into yeah. everything. The Alabama AG says they're not going to prosecute IVF families or providers. But 
that doesn't really mean anything because another AG could come along and be even more psychotic and be like, no, 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 we are going to prosecute. I mean, and the reason you would prosecute them is because people who have embryos frozen at some point, you just like dispose of those embryos because you don't want any more kids or you were unable to get pregnant via IVF or whatever happens. In this case, what I've seen is that possibly you'd have to be paying for the freezing of those embryos in perpetuity if you didn't want to be charged with murder. Yes. Yes. And also Which I feel like wild. we don't even know what the statute, like, like, let's say even the current AG is like, oh no, I don't want to, has said, I don't want to prosecute people. What's the statute of limitations, right? Let's say right. like, you might destroy an embryo now. And then five, 10 years down the line, some new person is like, no, 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 that crime you did. We know what you did. Also, as long as rules like this, as long as um, rulings like this are on the books, none of us are safe, right? None of us are safe. It, it sort of opens the door for all kind of similar rulings or all other things that continue to chip away at our reproductive freedoms and our reproductive rights as our yeah. at our reproductive hopes. <laughs> yeah. Well, OK, so re Republicans are actually scrambling to fix this. They're like freaking out. Um, I believe the Republican led Senate is going to introduce something that like gives an exemption for IVF in uh, Alabama uh, explicitly. Uh, Nancy Mace uh, and other representatives in the House are like swearing that they're going to protect IVF, even though they've all signed this Life at Contra uh, Conception Act, Life at Conception Act, which has no carve outs for IVF. Um, now they're all freaking out. And a lot of them, including like Mike Pence and other Republicans, have like families thanks to IVF. Here's my question for you. And I kind of feel like to me, we all understand that reproductive like clamping down on reproductive rights is all about control of people's bodies that's pretty much 100 percent. and so the extra uterine embryo if it's in a lab or it's in a freezer is like, like it's not fun anymore for republicans because like it doesn't come along with like a uterus to you know like control you're just like oh no 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 we just want to control the person having the unwanted kid or having the wanted kid um we don't care about the facility. Like, don't you feel like this kind of gives up the ghost that they don't really care about the child? If a fertilized egg is a child, they don't really care, but they only care if it allows them to, com them to control people's bodies. Oh, 100%. It's absolutely another mechanism to control people who have, who give birth, right? Who care? But I don't know. I still think, I still think, and this is my personal opinion, that they still like this is still a big step in just enshrining that like a fetus is a person, right? That right. a a collection of cells is a person and that they are due all of the rights um, of a living child, right? Yeah. Um, and, and we see this in other states, like also Alabama's just taking it the furthest, but uh, yeah. I think in Georgia right now, you can get child support or a tax credit and maybe it's tax credit, not child support if you're pregnant, which again, that's Wait. not, yeah, that's the thing. Oh, okay. Because I'd be like, yo, if we get tax credits for like embryos, let I I would do it. Like, I'm hard, let's go. Like, that would, oh my god, that's like uh, no crying, no swaddling diapers, the just money, tax credits. no just college credits. fund, just straight up tax credits for my embryos. On these are my babies. I'll have them right here. I swear to God. No, I think you do actually currently have to be pregnant, but you know they'll, they'll get around to it. What? I, just to go back to the beginning of your question, yeah. though, I think yeah. a lot of it is that. A lot of times, like conservative politicians think like, oh, we're for life, we're for kids, but they don't necessarily think through like the actual ramifications of these promises or these policies that they back. They just like how it sounds like, oh, we're 100 percent for life, for life. We're 100 percent for like children. We're here for the babies. But then kind of like even what ha what is happening with the Dobbs decision, right? Like, what they maybe did not think through or expect were pregnant people miscarrying outside of hospitals right, with wanted pregnancies or not, or finding all of these these new things. Like, I think they didn't think it through. It was like, this sounds great for a particular part of the base, but the logical conclusion of their thoughts, I don't know if they think that far. Mm. I mean, 
Lance, please jump in. I mean, I'm sure I don't know how many eggs oh, yeah. on ice you have. Yeah, or how many, yeah. Or how many, or how many times exactly. you've been pregnant, Lance. I'd love to hear yeah. about this. Yeah. Yeah, I was, I was, I was going to cis mansplain this whole topic. I love it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, no. Well, I, I, I think the really, really wild thing about this story is that wasn't there a politician who was being interviewed and they were asking him about IVF and I think he thought it was something else. Like, I, I don't know if he's, he's like yeah, life I, begins at flirtation kind of idea. But yeah, like, it was Tommy Tuberville. <laughs> okay, yes. oh, he, was so he, he was like, was this is great. And he was like, oh, yeah. maybe I haven't read it. <laughs> yeah, and then like the, the question kept going. And they're like, well, what about women who are like trying to conceive? Like, this is to help people have birth. This is what you're this is your jam, right? Like, this is what you're supposed to be all about. Like babies, 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 sanctity of life, fetuses, fetuses. And then all of a sudden this comes along, like, oh, that's what this does. Oh, okay. Uh yeah, that too. Thanks. Yeah, that's it's all sin. Yeah, Tommy Tuberville. That was the man who uh remember was wasn't letting military promotions go forward because he wanted yes. to stop uh, service people who needed abortions from having any possibility of having abortion care. That's right. That's uh, right. Yeah. Which uh, is a, and, a peach. And I think that's really interesting. It's also one of the reasons that like the right is now calling the military woke, right? Is because it's protecting the right for service members to get abortions um, and just basic health care, base, which is basic health care. Um, maybe we could watch that. I don't know if I hope. Tell me if you guys can see and hear this do you have a yeah, reaction to alabama supreme court ruling on the fact that embryos are children yeah i was all for it we need to have more kids we need to have an opportunity to do that <laughs> we need to have more kids right thing to do, but... ivf is used to have more children and right now ivf services are paused at some of the clinics in alabama aren't you concerned that this could impact people who are trying to have kids well that's for that's for another conversation people need to have we need more kids we need people to to have the opportunity to have kids. Senator, what do you say to the women right now in Alabama who no longer have access to IVF or who will not as a result of this ruling? What do you say to them? Well, that's a hard one. It really is. It's really hard. Uh, I swear to God, I think he thinks they, they meant IUD. I think, I think that's what it was. Did. Yeah, I, I think that's what <laughs> okay, it was. Okay. Like, yeah, no, get rid of it. it, it <laughs> promiscuous sex. Was like, no, no, no. <laughs> it's just like, I support the IDF, you know, what they need to do when they need to go in there. <laughs> you know, I support, they, they have the right to defend themselves. Absolutely. Oh my God. Yeah. So, I mean, and but like, Moji, you work on reproductive rights and, and, and abortion rights. This is par for the course when it comes to the same politicians making these laws. I'm sure he's a signatory to the right to life that begins at conception. I'm sure. Has no idea how reproductive systems work. I mean, do you remember um, it was, a, I think, a, a senator or governor, uh, what's his name, Atkins, who said, uh, he said a couple of really fun things, but one was like, oh no, if a woman is raped, uh, the body has a way of just shutting that down, shutting that down, <laughs> just shutting that. That oh my God. down which is like, these people are making laws about a process that they don't even understand. Right. Yeah. And, and they find, think like witch powers exist or something. Right? Oh, it's just like, what, what well, is going yeah. on? Oh my gosh! <laughs> oh my goodness! Or an abortion is a is witchcraft or sac or, yeah, or, or devil sacrifice, like like, which is my yeah, favorite style stuff. Yeah. Oh my gosh! Well, let me. Okay, speaking of the overturning of Dobbs, and then I want to ask ask about the election. Um, like, okay, what has pissed you off the most? about <laughs> since what are we a, a year and a half or something from the Stobbs decision you know beyond I guess clinics closing or maybe the the clinics that have chosen to close down maybe it's I mean there's a lot of different facets to the ramifications of you know the Dobbs decision and effectively overturning Roe but I guess maybe something that surprised you or something that's kind of the an undercovered story or or are you feeling more hopeful because of just how aware and just how angry, let's say, like red state women are? But let's tell me. That is such a tricky question because the question is like, what am I not like? What am I not upset about? What am I yeah. not unaware of? I think, I think seeing the ways that people, even places that are a little more red, have been willing, have always. I mean, at this point, every single time abortion ends up on the ballot, even in places like Kansas, people step in and say, wait, 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 we can't completely outlaw, right? We can't take it out of our constitution. So, um, knowing that has been nice to see. I've been working at AAF for. Um, a very quite some time, not a very long time, but quite some time over like eight years. And yeah. seeing the sea change from people being 
unwilling or uncomfortable to say abortion to people like um, being more willing or more excited to say abortion and talk about their abortion stories. I think that is something that has been, oh, you asked about the bad. That is something that has been good that's come out of the Dobbs decision. The bad is so innumerable, right? Like from the day of the Dobbs decision and actually even before when Texas instituted SB8, the suffering that people have had to endure, not just people who wanted to end pregnancies, but people who wanted wanted pregnancies and realized that for whatever reason, their pregnancy is not viable or not going to work for them. Knowing we hear a fraction of the stories yes. in the news of the suffering that people are enduring in states that have restricted abortion, but what we don't hear is probably a whole iceberg worth. Um, and so when I just think about the level of suffering that is um, preventable, right? It's not like doctors don't know how to do these positions. It's not like the technology doesn't exist. It's like doctors know exactly what to do. And it is legislators, it is politicians that are keeping them from giving people the relief that they need. That is overall, I think, what hurts me the most. Yes, it is the most um, government in your business, the most violation of privacy, the most bureaucratic way of- and the the most help. my God knows best, right? These are all, this is all pushed by a narrow uh, understanding of one particular religion, right? There's not other faiths that are out here saying like, oh yeah, Jewish people, we don't do this. Muslim people, right. we don't do this. Atheists, right. we don't do this. It's a narrow sect of Christians, <laughs> not even Christian all. Nationalists. Christian nationalists. Christian nationalists that are saying that the way that we understand our religious text is the way that everybody needs to live, right? It's yeah. not... It's not like we have a consensus. We actually know that abortion is broadly popular in this country. It's always been broadly popular in this country. It's about like 60, 70% of people believe that abortion is should be allowed to people at most times. So, and that's across the country, right? What we have is a problem of a specific group of people who are very empowered and have further cemented their power with gerrymandering that leads to us all having to live with a minority opinion. Yes. One, I mean, look at Alabama, right? Like, I mean, I think this case in point, you know, there's there's these just like these state legislatures are completely overrun with Republicans and they're to say nothing of their courts. Um, but I think the cruelty is is a layer I wasn't expecting, but maybe should have been. You should have been. Um, right. Yeah. Like <laughs> and I think the cruelty for people who um, just want reproductive they want reproductive care. Right. And they are forced to watch their children die in their arms because they're forced to have a non viable pregnancy and carry that to term. I or mean, bleed out in the parking lot, right? Or bleed because out. Because the they can't lot. get the, the care that they need, then the care that doctors are, are fully equipped to give, they're just not allowed to. Yeah. Also, the cruelty is not new, right? We are talking about the cruelty post Dobbs. Before Dobbs in Alabama, you had a 48 hour waiting period. There were all there are all these carve outs so that you can't pay for it in ways that make it accessible to people who are not wealthy. They had a judicial bypass and they would um, appoint lawyers to represent the fetus with children who were pregnant. Oh my god! So like oh that's Alabama, god. right? In like 2014, when Roe was very much the law of the land, the cruelty is not new. What we're seeing is the cruelty expanded and um, and not defying constitutional norms. Right. But they're all expanding their like, you know, state school lunch programs, Moji. So we know they actually do. Ca oh, wait, no, no. They've, <laughs> they've completely. You're talking rejected. about Minnesota. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, one state. Um, let's let's turn to the election because we know like women in red states are mad as hell. Uh, Republicans are not really running on their so-called success in um, stopping people from exercising their free will uh, when it comes to abortion. Like, what do you make politically of how Republicans are using this? And, and also the fact that, like, Donald Trump behind the scenes is saying he supports, what is it, a 16-week ban federal ban? But he's not campaigning on that. He's not openly saying that. So what do you make of them kind of running from their record, and do you think it's going to screw them in, an, in elections? So... They're counting on people not remembering the things that they've said, or they're counting on people um, not paying attention, or they're counting on people not having abortion be their primary issue, which right. it is for me personally. Um, and I, it's not just red state 
people, right? Like there's no safe states in this country with a conservative or Republican president, we could have a national ban. Truthfully, with the MIFI ruling that's coming up, we could have some version of national ban on MIFI by the end of this year, right? By the middle of this year. So there are no safe states. And I think that Republicans have realized, again, that their policies are broadly unpopular and in the local level, they're counting on the gerrymandering, right? When you're really yeah. gerrymandered, it almost doesn't matter if most people disagree with your policies. You just need to appeal to the base that you ger gerrymandered to focus on. On the national level, I'm so worried, Francesca. Yeah. Like, I am so worried because I think that people... I, 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 watch, I watch and... Well, mostly listen. I listen to podcasts. I read the news all the time. This is what we do at AF. I am fully dialed in on like what's happening in the world, but I think a lot of people aren't really paying attention, aren't really thinking through the practical ramifications of what could happen in a Republican presidency. Yeah. Um, obviously, Biden's also not going to save us. <laughs> like yeah. he's, he's had almost two years to give us some relief from the Dobbs decision. And it seems like it's not that important. I don't know if that's the holy grail for what will push his unpopularity onto us or what, but. Mm -hmm. I mean, it seems like Biden. I feel like I'm just complaining. <laughs> no, no, no. I think it's good. I mean, I think that, I think it is fair to say that there because it had been such established law and I think people that weren't mired in the or who weren't affected by the ways that Drow had been chipped away at for, you know, years and years before the actual Dobbs decision came down, that that folks were kind of largely tuned out for it. And I would argue, I mean, even some of the mainstream, um, you know, reproductive rights, abortion rights organizations were not doing, I guess, a good enough job at really lobbying and or making sure they had like supportive a supportive base that was aware, blah blah blah. But you're right that yeah, Trump will pass a federal ban. It's like also our media though, because I feel like every time abortion wins in the ballot, the media is like, oh my gosh, people still care about this. Right, right. <laughs> like, you're, you're like every damn day. We're like, every we, this damn is day <laughs> at people's lives have, have all the time. Seen a lot of success in America though, in places that you would otherwise think were really red. Having some elections, like in Kentucky, for example, where abortion was a driving factor, like it Absolutely. actually was getting people out to the polls. Absolutely. Maybe, would you would you say that there's like an uh, maybe an un, uh, unassumed amount of anger that the Republicans are miscalculating in that regard? Because like the the midterms were supposed to be the the red wave and all that kind of stuff right but it seems like what a big driving factor was in a lot of different areas seemed to be just the loss of uh, bodily autonomy really does mm -hmm. galvanize people. it does you know? and i think and abortion is a winning issue i absolutely do believe that i absolutely agree with everything you're saying lance i also feel like sometimes if you are not uh either those of us who consume media uh, voraciously news voraciously or a person who is uh, imminently dealing with the fallout of these bans, sometimes people just forget right. <laughs> that they have the power to be to impact them in other ways. Or sometimes people forget that like abortion is an economic issue, right? So they're like, I'm worried about the economy. And it's like, well, if you're forced to have children that you're unable to support, that's an economic issue. Yes. If you're forced to pay for additional health care because the basic abortion health care that could have helped you in your crisis moment is out of reach because of politicians, that's an, op that's an economic issue. And so yeah. I think that a lot of times abortion is sort of divorced and this happens even in medicine, from being just a part of a wholesale healthy electorate. Uh, and this is a media problem. This is a messaging problem. This is as much an individual problem as it is the Democratic Party. And I think they're trying. But also, I think for the last couple decades, Republicans have been running on um, pro-life, pro-life, pro-life. And Democrats have not at all in any point been like uh, pro-choice, pro-abortion, pro-reproductive rights. And so yeah. I think that in the last two years, there's been a forcing to relearn how to flex that muscle. And it, 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 like But with Democrats else. like these, <laughs> yes. I mean, we have Nancy Pelosi who, I mean, she obviously she's not the speaker anymore, but, you know, up until in 2016, she was still like, I think you can be a Democrat and be, you know, against... Uh, choice and you're like oh excuse me no I'm sorry our current 
Democratic front writer has recently said something to the tune of abortion on demand in a weird way, like in the last he few was, weeks. He was giving a, <laughs> yeah, he was giving a speech, I think, at a Catholic uh, assembly or something like that. Oh, he was boy. talking about how like abortion should be rare. Uh, oh, that legal and rare. That old that old stigmatizing and, trope. Yeah. So I think yeah. that we that that progressives, Democrats, don't know how to use this, don't know how to talk about it. And we're trying because people are mad and people are seeing the the terrible outcome from these abortion bans. Um, but there's much more to be said and there's so much more to be done. Can you about tell me- it as, Oh, sorry, go ahead. Oh, no, no, go ahead. I was gonna ask, what about reframing it as forced birth? As as in like the, the other side is trying to force women to give birth or in this case in Alabama, not be able to give birth against their will. Right, because that's essentially what's being done. Yes, and please tell that to your local politicians. <laughs> yeah. And and actually, I've been really, you know, because forced birth is something that like abortion AF introduced me to, like that term, including the term aunties, including the term miffy, which right. now I'm using all the time. Yes, um, but <laughs> it's short for mifepristone, right? <laughs> which is the first drug in the and in the abortion, abortion pill, pill regimen, right? And then it's so. What's our? Is it miso? Or are we going to shorten? Mis it is. It's Miffy and Miso. Absolutely. When Mif I, I did, I'm oh, wearing my abortion Miso. necklace, but I was going to wear my Miffy and Miso necklace as well. Yes, Very cause... cute. I love yeah, that. Yeah, if yeah. I yeah. if I um, am forced birthing twins, I will name them Miffy. Miffy and Miso. Those are excellent names. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> um, Miffy and Miso Fiorentini. <laughs> yeah. Miffy Fiorentini. That actually really works. Um, <laughs> scary. But what can Biden, like, what should the Biden administration or the Biden campaign be saying, right? They are rallying, trying to rally folks around them at, around abortion rights as if, like, they're their last holdout. <laughs> <laughs> what? What should the Biden be? I have yeah, like, a list. <laughs> yeah, please. <laughs> because basically they're they're saying, and this is what happens is the Republicans lower the bar and then Democrats say, oh, the, we would never lower that bar. And you're like, cool, except the bar is here. It is a sh it is centimeters above where you say you don't want to lower it to. Like, how about raising the bar? How about making everything better? And they don't seem to have a plan, but maybe I haven't been following it as much. Is Biden talking about getting rid of the filibuster finally so we can, you know, codify Roe v. Wade if there is a Democratic Senate going, you know, forward? You know, Francesca, I really wish I had the answer to that question, but I spend <laughs> so much time looking at the the minutia of what's going on in states that I am not paying attention to the bumbling of um of uh, that person just yet. <laughs> Don't get me wrong. Like, I listen, I skimmed Project 2025 and I have no doubt what we can't have. But yes, okay. I think yes. right now, yes. like I have no words, right? Like say abortion, L talk to people who have boots on the ground, who are out here. There is a, well, well, I talked about how like Democrats, um, polit Democratic politicians maybe don't have the words or the language. There are activists who have been on the ground, including my org, but lots of other orgs as well mm -hmm. that have been on the ground for decades who have a wealth of experience. And you know what no one's saying they're doing? being invited to talk in spaces to really help talk about how to address this. Yes. Yes. Listening to them, listening to like demystifying it, stop making it such a weird, like, you know, um, yeah, like a bad word. And I think that's something abortion AF has done really well. And I think the other thing you guys always talk about is supporting all pregnancy outcomes yes. and how clear is it that abortion is health care and abortion is reproductive care than what we're seeing now where people who want to be parents are, again, like you mentioned, bleeding out in their cars because they're not allowed to get a DNE or a DNC to safely um, not be pregnant anymore. And it's like this, these are family values. Abortion values are family values. 60% of people who get abortions are already parents. Yes. Or um, go on, or go on to be parents, right? Like it's right. just it's just a step in one's reproductive journey, right? right? And it's we don't all take the same steps in our reproductive journeys, but abortion is one of those steps that is not exotic. It's something yes. that is extremely common in one's reproductive journey, and it doesn't mean that you don't have kids. It doesn't mean you won't have kids. It just means that at this moment, that is not the right choice for a person, and that should be honored at any time by anyone who yeah. needs it or wants it. Yes. And so you have a so okay. Let's say Biden reelected narrowly if he makes it to November. Um, what's the plan? Like, what do you like? You're an advisor. What what the hell? 
Oh, I'm an advisor? Yeah, what do we do? Oh, do, we do? oh my gosh. Well, step one, we are going to pillage some things from Project 2025 and figure out what these mechanisms they were going to use to outlaw abortion and use it to actually really strengthen things. We're definitely going to get Comstock off the books because Comstock is the latest Trojan horse that... Um, <coughs> what is that? It? Comstock is, is an act from 1864, I believe. Um, Comstock was a postman. And essentially the Comstock Act is what is basically makes it illegal to transport to mail, sorry, to send lewd items through the mail. And it is something that has been ignored for some time. Mm -hmm. But right now, um, anti-abortion activists are trying to use it to say, well, abortion pills cannot be sent through the mails or right. items used for surgical abortions cannot be sent through the mail, right? Because they're not all manufactured in the states that people can have access to abortion. But if you say that those can't be mailed, how do you get them to other states? And actually in the Miffy case that is before the Supreme Court right now, uh, I was recently asked to look at the Comstock Act and use it to um, nullify the usage of the abortion pill. And in the last Jeez. few years, the abortion pill has become who something sent like be... a dildo in 1863. You know what I'm saying? No. Like who, what, what happened? Like, how was it? This I don't know, but Comstock collected them and brought them to the state house to say, we can't send these. That is actually what he you did. You could put that in your butt. You could put that in that your butt. In fact, what he did, butt. he collected, he did, he collected I dildos that, that were sent in the mail. And he said, oh my uh, God. Don't put this in your butt and don't let people mail it to places to put it in your butt. So also anyone who's like Damn. bought a vibrator off offline apparently is violating the Comstock Act. Jesus. <laughs> I mean, they would love know. that. They, and they so would... this is this book again, this rule again is over a century old. There have been so many opportunities where Democrats have been in power where they could have just removed it from the books yes. and no one got to it. So I think that yeah. there are a lot of these sort of zombie laws, zombie rules. And as people saw the Dobbs um, decision coming years before progressive states started removing zombie abortion laws from their states, Illinois, New York, a lot of states just said, oh my goodness, Roe v. Wade happened and it just nullified this abortion yeah. law. Let's get rid of it so that if Roe v. Wade is overturned, we don't automatically have this Right, law that you have that no to one's be married in to. order or something like this. Or, you're, yeah. or your husband has to sign on or yes. just that it's illegal. And so- um, there are a lot of things like that that exist in our federal statutes. And so if I was uh, in any power in our uh, progressive government uh, that doesn't exist, then I would absolutely be like, let's comb through these and not let these weapons just lie in wait. Uh, Speaking of weapons, how were dildos made in the 1860s? <laughs> I love that you think I'm a dildo historian, and that's yeah, well, fantastic you know for me. And I will work on that for the next time I'm on this show. I will bring a detailed account of how dildos are made. I'm assuming wood. I don't know. Did they have plastic? A lot of splinters. Did it, did it vibrate? Was it just like a bunch of crickets in a thing? I don't know. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Crickets in a hollowed out. Yes. I love that. They're just yes. popping around. It's, yeah. Grasshoppers in a in a in a bag. I don't. I don't know. Comstock, more like <laughs> Comstock. You know what I'm saying? Okay. But uh, yeah, I'm a comedian. Um, any so final thoughts before we let you go? Um, final thoughts. Everybody, vote always. Do what you can to support undoing any sort of gerrymandering in your space. Because a lot of times, I just want to say that the reason that Dobbs happened um, and the reason that any law really gets to the Supreme Court is because one state decides to pass something that is unconstitutional and then it winds its way through the court and then that becomes law of the land. So one of the yeah. things that we need to be worried about in something like this Alabama case is that uh, the Alabama deciding that extra uterine embryos are children is that an appeal could happen. It could run through our very conservative judiciary and make it to the Supreme Court. And then all of a sudden nationwide, embryos are children. And so we need to make sure that these things are stopped at the local level or just don't even exist at the local level. And so if you're not a voter, vote <laughs> in your local elections, because that's a lot of what matters. Mm -hmm. And if you can do anything to help with redistricting or just undoing gerrymandering in any space you're in, do that. Uh, that's my final word on what we can do to, to move change anywhere. Yeah, That's one of the ways that we can floor the floor of getting involved is something yeah. like that 
I lastly, I just want to ask: Do you feel like people are? Yeah, aafront.com. dot org. Org. We are an org. org. <laughs> I apologize, <laughs> but I just want to: Do you feel like funding is drying up, or do you feel like it's still there for abortion rights organizations? And is that, you know, what I'm saying? Like, is it suffering a broader progressive? fun dry spell around I funding. think that when the Dobbs decision happened everyone and this is really just speaking more in individuals everyone was mad and fired up and throwing their money at mm -hmm. abortion rights and I think some of that is still happening but I think it doesn't have the passion that it did I think that right. also we have individually we have fatigue at things right like we haven't solved this problem yet <laughs> yeah no and <laughs> I mean I think the other thing is like we knew this was going to happen as soon as Trump was elected we knew this was going to happen mm -hmm. look the, the women's march was about this like I don't care what anyone says mm -hmm. it wasn't about Trump it was about body bodily autonomy it was about reproductive rights it was and it Absolutely. was also widely like if you guys obviously you uh, if you weren't at I women's was there. march I was right there. Yeah. like the most intergenerational multiracial like multi-gender like a lot of women but a lot of dudes it's just like it was great i mean and and the best part was that hillary clinton wasn't there in 2016 it's all my favorite part anyway However, if she had been president <laughs> Exactly, exactly. <laughs> However, I would have wanted president. her to be president and not at the march <laughs> lamenting how the fuck she lost that. Um, but Moji, you're wonderful. Everybody check out abortion AF, uh, aafront.org. And check out and our podcast, Feminist Buzz Kills. More importantly, Feminist Buzz Kills with Moji and Liz. All right, All right. Thank you. Take Moji, good it was care. Great to meet you. It was great to meet you also, Lance. I'm going to come back with um, some more deets about the, those vibrators soon. Please do. Nice. I mean, on Thanks. the fly, crickets in a bag? Like, come on now. That was like, <laughs> that's creative masturbation right there. Um, oh, God. All right. We have, we, let's move like, on. Can you segue from there? <laughs> you let's segue. A, you're, you're, you're a pro. Speaking of crickets in a bag, um, Chaya mm. Raichik, who is uh, the head of an account called libs of tiktok if you don't know what libs of tiktok is it's basically a vehicle for transphobic doxing and fear mongering and uh, this um human i think uh sat down with washington post reporter taylor lorenz uh, whose beat is basically the internet and the reason that this matters that this interview matters is because it happened the same week that a non-binary 16 year old uh, named next benedict was jumped and beaten in an Oklahoma high school. Um, and then the day after, um, died. Uh, now the coroner, I guess, has said that it wasn't necessarily related to, or the, excuse me, the police have said it's not related to the beating that Nex, um, suffered the day before, but I think, I think we're still waiting to hear officially, although Lance seems to have a lot of breaking news. Um, <laughs> now the reason it's tied to Rychik and libs of TikTok is because Rychik was actually hired by the superintendent of the district in Oklahoma to monitor woke activities, in quotes, books in the libraries, teachers who were gay. And lo and behold, Rychik successfully got one of the teachers who was non-binary, who worked at Nexus School, fired uh, for nothing, didn't do anything, just uh, they were non-binary. So, of course, uh, they're touching kids. Um, so that's she did the tweet backdrop. that out. She said that they were fired for I mean, just just so we're clear. Like she once again did that thing where she slanders or libels LGBTQ plus people by saying they're queers or child abusers or pedophiles. She did that in this case for that teacher. Just, yeah. Yeah. Of course, of course. So now Taylor's been following Chaya, so there's a lot that I wanna there's a few clips I wanna get to, but number one, let's talk about next because that was the biggest thing was like, how does Chaya Rychik feel about next, this person who is in a school district where, yeah, they've been going after trans people like Nex. Um, take a look. How do you feel about Nex's death? It's very tragic. Uh -huh. It's horrible. Do you believe Nex should have been allowed to receive gender affirming care? Uh, she should not be allowed to go on irreversible puberty blockers or get sex change surgery. So just right off the bat, um, oh, it's horrible, it's terrible. Um, and then uh, misgendering right there. Um, uh, calling them she, uh, and then saying, yeah, no, I don't believe that they should receive any kind of gender affirming care, um, or whatever Chaya understands as gender, uh, affirming care, because a lot of the like non-reversible puberty blockers, a lot of it is reversible. Once you stop puberty blockers, you idiots. But anyway, 
Now that is, so that's the initial, not the initial, but those were her thoughts on next. And Lance, I have to say that she's talk, sitting down with Taylor Lorenz and two things are immediately upsetting to me beyond the fact that this woman is a fear mongering a-hole uh, and has single-handedly contributed to trans people in this country being less safe. Um, I don't know, by however much percent. Two things. One, she's in Los Angeles. And apparently she lives part-time in Los Angeles. I live in Los Angeles. And I understand this is a big city. A lot of transphobes in this city. But, bitch, really? You here too? Really? <laughs> really? Like, you're in a blue state. You're in a crime-infested, homeless encampments. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, this... She spends time between here and Florida, I guess, and then occasionally, I guess, visited Oklahoma once where she's an advisor to the superintendent. And then number two, she's wearing a T-shirt of Taylor Lorenz crying. So yeah, was... she's openly wearing this. Now you're laughing. What do you like? I saw t like Tim Pool, right wing, you know, commentator idiot was just like, oh, it's such an own like, uh -huh. like, oh, yeah, the cope was really strong. Him, all the right wingers made videos about like, oh, Taylor Lorenz got so embarrassed. It's so hilarious. And I was like, this objectively just, uh, you know, from someone who watches a lot of people on both sides of the political spectrum was a disaster for Hyder Eichick. Uh, it was an hour long, and Taylor Lorenz answers every single question honestly. Like, the whole thing, if you just want a summary of the, the hour, I think Hyder Eichek thought that she was going to get a gotcha. She was like, this is going to be a, a big own. I'm going to wear a, a face, a picture of you crying from an interview that she did where she said she was getting a lot of harassment and abuse online. I got that photo of that face on my shirt, and it's going to be hilarious. And I'm going to flip, I'll do like the Uno, the, sorry, the Uno reverse card, right? So every single time, uh, like, Taylor Lorenz would be like, so it's really messed up. Don't you think that if you put someone on blast, say a nurse, doctor, a children's hospital worker, and then you put their address, if they get death threats, bomb threats, or perhaps violence enacted against them, and she's like, well, what do you think about all the death threats and bomb threats that I get? And it's like, mm -hmm. oh, I would, I would, I would condemn them. Just like right away. It was that over and over and over. She would be like, well, what do you think about this? And be like, oh, yeah, no, I think that's bad. And so it looks ridiculous. Well, after a like straight 30 or so minutes of this, obviously, like I know I know a lot of people who are upset with the very idea of platforming someone like Higher Right Chick. I, I think unfortunately, people like you know, Joe Rogan, Tucker Carlson, Glenn Greenwald have promoted uh the reach of Libs of TikTok to such a degree that it is a genuine danger for the LGBTQ plus community and specifically for trans kids. Like yeah. she, her work makes their lives scarier, makes their yes. lives harder, and, and and contributes <laughs> to a lot of factors. The the you can look at study after study all of the, the 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 things that are associated negatively with being trans at a kid such as depression anxiety or suicidal ideation all disappear when cis folk you know start not acting like assholes like that that mm -hmm. is the factor it's societal stigma that's what makes their lives harder is people treating them differently or not you know misgendering them or, or all that kind of stuff so higher right chick does a lot of real world damage and there are countless examples there's actual news articles that about the show when you do this thing that you do you take publicly available information or sometimes it is just like this is a a, a video of a doctor or a nurse you then say that they're a child rapist a pedophile a groomer and, and then you tell everyone all your fans where to find them uh, and then you add they're coming for your kids that's just their tagline right they're coming right. for your kids they're coming right. for your kids news articles have come out that show that these specific children's hospitals get inundated with bomb threats and death threats right so that's why this is like th these are acts of terrorism that are committed because you put a target on the back of like again like uh, it's such a are we the baddies moment like children's hospitals educators <sighs> nurses doctors did like genuinely no, no. Very she is the baddie and she people. knows she's the baddie like and i don't give a, f a fuck that i mispronounce her name chaya haya i don't give a haya hitler that's what i want like to call her oh, wow. um <laughs> she's i mean come on like so and you're to your point that's exactly what she does throughout this you interview. know she's a fascist i agree she's a fascist this is what she does throughout this interview is spinning it around on Taylor Lorenz, even though she ultimately does not end up on top. Taylor is an incredible interviewer um, and completely crushes it here. Case in point of of whatever, trying to spin it around monster gal trying to spin it around. And then Taylor's like, no, no, I'm going to spin it back around. And what are you going to say to that? So here they are talking about whether someone should be, held responsible for the kinds of violence that they incite of you know th that they incite with their own fans and their own base oh i i feel like there's been especially on um my colleagues have done great reporting on sort of like this 
rift on Twitter. I know that you have a very conservative fan base and in your comments sometimes you'll see a lot of commentary about sort of the great replacement theory. What are your thoughts on what are your thoughts on that? What are your thoughts on your common your, the comments on your post telling me to kill myself? Horrible. Yeah, horrible. Yeah. Obviously against that. Yeah. So would you come out and con- and condemn that publicly? Oh, I would condemn it any time. I'm t- against, you know, I'm against murdering anyone of course so you're against death threats against against me i yeah i'm i would i'm a big you know as somebody that's dealt with a lot of online harassment i don't i don't defend uh threatening to murder anyone but i guess i'm curious you know because a lot of times it comes after an attack from the, in the media like some, someone like you or another journalist so are you saying that like you know if somebody posts something and then attacks follow that person should answer for those attacks? No, that's not what I'm saying. Oh, okay. I'm saying that they, 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 people like you tell me that all the time. So I'm just asking if you think the same thing. And she said, yes, I do think that that's awful and that's bad. So like, like, this is a, I think if you watch nothing else about the modern right wing, this is the perfect minute to watch because it so explicitly shows the way that they do sort of the incitement of violence. They are the ones who are targeting, as we talked about, trans kids, teachers, nurses, anyone from the LGBTQ plus community, educators. And people then for existing. people for existing. And when they get hate, they want to claim victim status. And they say, but we thought you, the left or the media supported victims. Do you not support victims? And then the left's like, and the media's like, yeah, no, we, we do. And they're like, oh, okay, good. And then we say, well, but do you? And they're like, no, no, I don't. I'm just, I'm just using this as a talking point to get you to admit that I'm actually the aggrieved and not the person that I'm ordering hits out on. Like it is so perfectly encapsulates how they try to use like language they don't even believe in right Mm. like values like protecting kids that they don't even believe in or keeping people safe um to say nothing of painting themselves as the victim yeah Um, i I think what's wild about this too is that like you can really tell that her and maybe matt walsh is another example of this they're so profoundly boring as human beings are so hard to listen to that they have to be extra malicious and and say the worst things and really go a lot harder than maybe some other their contemporaries will but she becomes so popular who in their right mind thought this interview was a good idea like if she actually had you know like an aide or a handler who was sitting there they would have been like no (laughs) not the answer she was saying because like it comes across as like have you thought any of this out do you even know the people you hate do you you know the people whose lives you actively make scarier or worse on a regular basis like you get paid for this this is your job this is your career you have an empire of bigotry she makes money right she she used to be involved with the babylon b and seth dylan they were you know bank uh, front loading the entire thing and now Mm -hmm. she's she doesn't she won't reveal why they they're not frenzies anymore either way like how do you not know your enemies how do you not know the people you claim to hate you couldn't answer very basic questions about like well what do you think about uh cis uh teenagers getting breast implants that's that's a form of gender affirming care what yes. do you think about men you know getting uh hair plugs that's a form of gender affirming care don't you don't care about these surgeries or these operations when it's for cis folk you only care if it happens to trans people and then she was like oh well these are totally different no the one of them is genital mutilation the other, the other one is just breast implants yeah yeah, yeah exactly Exactly. It is gender, absolutely gender affirming. And she also continues, she has no remorse for any of the death threats that she has helped to, None. or the bomb threats that have been called in. She's asked explicitly about that. And clearly this, this person has taken all the mirrors down in her home. Um, I, I also just think it's really like, here was her response to like, what if you want gender affirming care? Cause it, you're a happy person and it makes you feel better. This is her, I mean, really solid metaphor of a response. Taking into account all of the happy people that have transitioned, who are not harming anyone, you can't come up with a single material harm? So if someone says, I'll be happier if I'm blind, should a doctor pull their eyes out? Gotcha. Gotcha. Got him. <laughs> no, you would pull your eyes out. Like this is her response to the idea of like there are happy people who have transitioned, who are literally just trying to live their goddamn lives. In fact, most people. Uh, what? What do you say about? That? Oh, I don't know. like it, it's just so bad. And then finally, Lance, I don't know if you picked up on this. I don't. I won't have to play the clip, but. She's like, I just think gender is like made up and it's and it's like, oh, that was amazing. Yeah. Yeah. 
the, yeah, and then she's like, and then and then immediately she's like, because it was created by a pedophile. And I was like, <laughs> I think you're talking about Foucault. I think that's what's, I can't I can't be sure about this, but I think that's what's happening here. And no, Foucault did not invent the concept of gender, but yes, it is the social construct. But the fact that you're just willing to use it as a gotcha, like it's that, that's the whole thing. Well, she's right? like, no, I think it's made up. And then Taylor's like, yeah, no, it is a social construct. She's like, no, 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 it's made up. And you're like, okay, but, but that's a well, by who? <laughs> by who? I think you're saying this, and so it's just like the whole and then taylor's like okay so if we only just went by male and female but people who presented as biologically male wore dresses would that be okay and she's just like eh, just does not know how to answer that like it <laughs> well that's that was one of the best parts i think that taylor lorenz did is she tried to get it down to its core what do you have to say to people who are happy like genuinely happy like just yes. just you know entertain me for a second pretend that you know i know you say they're all miserable but what do you say about people who are happy why do you want control or ruin their lives right and there is no good answer to that because like it's just kind of like the same topic about you know women's bodily autonomy we were talking about before it is ultimately about control right it is ultimately yes. about a thing i don't like i don't understand or is scary to me you know and i'm now going to oppress it however i can and it um, w without but also but using children but it's even more disconnected like at least mm. with a anti-abortionists like there's like some I, they can pretend that you know an embryo is a life or a zygote's a life or whatever but this is like you're, you're grooming children like no you're no no they're not they're living their damn lives but of course the people who i mean it's sad obviously that you know taylor kind of owned her on this but because she's usually used to just like talking or going after you know children so right. that that squares um here are kids in oklahoma alec 19 graduated owasso high school that's where next went to high school said things became so dangerous in oklahoma for lgbtq plus youth he has moved out of state um then evan powers trans kid in an oklahoma high school said he carries a bulletproof backpack along with books to use in self-defense I'm quite honestly scared to go to school every day, says Power17, adding, I have been bullied by people that watch libs of TikTok. I mean, it's like dating. It's like young kids who are like, I found, a, you know, a, an Andrew Tate video on my boyfriend's phone or some shit. I feel like this oh, is a huge red flag. You know huge what I'm saying? Right. It's like yeah. these are these accounts that are like it might feel disconnected if you're not trans or you're not a trans kid in school. But like if you are libs of tiktok is like put a target on your back um and like terrifying. you said earlier oftentimes just for existing is the messed up thing i know like a lot of people try to downplay what libs of tiktok specifically does but it is actually very insidious that she has found a way because like i have nothing against if you want to put cringe compilation like you know uh liberal tears compilation watch the meltdown that's totally different than you saying this is a person trying to sexually abuse kids and all the person's doing is like hi i use they them pronouns that's the video in a lot of these cases right she'll upload yeah. those people try to downplay the severity of it but it has real world and dangerous consequences and yeah like those examples you pulled up they're very heartbreaking there's another one from an owasso student who used to go to the school who stated that they were sexually assaulted uh and they're trans men and someone sexually assaulted them trying to remove their transness through sexual assault at, at the school and they, they've given a video <laughs> testimony to explain that this is the level of hatred that has been normalized by people like libs of tiktok and 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 like it's all a game to high as the other messed up thing like you were saying that she doesn't take it seriously she changed her twitter banner profile to bombs to the libs of tiktok logo made out of bombs and that was in response to the like the usa today article saying that there are multiple bomb threats being called to children's schools based on your quote unquote you know posts or reporting whatever you want to call it um it's like it's 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 one of those things where I love laughing at at a horrifying fascist like Haya and and, and all that kind of stuff uh, because it is very satisfying. But I think sometimes people don't realize the banality of evil. Like she seems completely boring and and you know vacuous and there's nothing really. She doesn't even know what she's talking about. But that doesn't matter. She she has a network that is utilized by a lot of people who oh. do genuinely hate LGBTQ plus folk and want to move them. You know. Well, that's what, see, she likes to think she's just a troll, yeah. but she's not. She knows, she's seen the impact. So here she is, she's putting the bombs in the logo and she doesn't, you know, she is trying to get around, you know, all the line of questioning because it's like, oh, I'm just an influencer and I'm just like, right? I'm just a troll. I'm just, <laughs> it's fun. It's yeah. not. You know exactly yeah. what you do. You 
rip people's videos. Someone's like, here's a drag show I was in, or here's a thing, or this is a school play or whatever. Literally rip people's videos. You post people's names, you post people's schools. You're getting hired by like, you know, the Oklahoma school board. Like what the hell? He didn't know so, why. She, she was asked, just like, oh, so what yeah. are the qualifications? He's like, what do you think the qualifications are? And then like, obviously Taylor Renz had, had to educate her on that. It's like, oh, I would assume that you need to have a background. <laughs> well, I was an educator. Yeah. No, yeah. this woman is vile. <laughs> Y'all, vile. I have words and thoughts I cannot even express, um, but I wouldn't say them because I don't want her to feel like a victim because she is an <laughs> ultimate Karen and she will fucking cry. Big old crock tears. I cannot wait for that. I cannot wait for this woman oh, to become irrelevant. I'm so, I, 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 ooh, Lance, like, last... I hate my heart. Boy, I got I, hate. Well, I was going to say one funny little crumb, though, because you said Karen. Her origin story is like the super Karen. It's the most Karen origin story of all time. When she was asked, like, what radicalized you? Oh, uh, COVID measures, like masks, washing your hands, <laughs> mild inconveniences is what turned you into a super villain. Like, I love the, the idea of washing your hands made someone a fascist. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? I just, uh, I had no I choice. like to I smell mean, like <laughs> ass. Um, no, it. It, it, oh god i can't even i can't even meanwhile taylor lorenz is wearing a mask which is very funny because i think taylor is very like still and good on her hyper aware of covid doesn't want to get sick whatnot i believe she's immunocompromised too she's she's advocated for that before saying that it's, it's a, Perfect. A, a big big risk to her yeah good good i'm glad because they're both arguably wearing something that triggers the other one <laughs> right like yeah, taylor's wearing a mask which you know like i mean like and they've talked like haya whatever they were like oh why are you wearing a mask they're all freaking out and then of course haya's wearing the photo of taylor crying that's all yeah. we ever need to talk about uh when it comes to this um vile ass um fungi mm -hmm. speaking or of cordyceps from the uh the clickers from the last of us she's a clicker she's a she's a human clicker have or, you, have you been playing the game or watching the show recently you well, got, so you i got watched, last of us on the brain well i watched the show recently mm -hmm. i did which is good because the next season's not gonna come out for forever and then matt mm -hmm. my husband keeps on me like you should just watch me play the game and i'm like i'd rather <laughs> die <laughs> i'm the same with my partner <laughs> like, yeah just, just, you gotta watch the game the game's so good <laughs> no i know and it's like i get it but also i'd rather die and then i kind of make fun of it while we watch the show which is fun where i'm like oh this is the part where they freeze and then a really long block of text comes up and you have to like read it and they're like oh i've just here's backstory i know i found a weapon um and he's like oh this part was so hard in the actual game like i don't care i don't I care <laughs> <laughs> hey, tell them to follow me on Twitter, by the way. We're friendsies. Oh, yeah, but, yeah you never give me. Yeah, I, I know. will. It I will. Hurt, okay. Hurt me. We have one more segment. Oh, my God. I promise this will be quick because it was Black History Month. But was it? Considering uh, that Donald Trump just took a week. Just like sometimes he just goes, he just goes for it. And um, he decides to, I guess, mock people to their faces. And he was at... Um, what was this? It was a um, conservative black federation gala um, in South Carolina. And um, look, for all the things you could say about Black History Month, it's a lot, often it can be performative. There's a lot of corporate misfires. You know, to me, it is really like it's hard to like I feel like post BLM movement, I feel this is just a caveat about Black History Month because we haven't talked about it and it's been Black History Month for all of February. I do feel like there is a corporatization and a co-opting that even corporations are aware of. And there's also like performativeness in political circles, you know, like I think, you know, Kamala Harris is going to be, um, you know, commemorating Bloody Sunday and all this. And like, like we do this every year and yet we still don't have like, our voting rights enshrined and insured. We still don't, we still have gutted the Civil Rights Act. You know, we still um, like to say nothing of like actual prison, real prison reform or any of the demands that BLM put forward in terms of, I don't know, monitoring police killings of unarmed African-Americans. So it's just, it. I think, I think since 2020, Black History Month feels even more hollow because we sort of hit the roof of what our elected officials are truly willing to do for to make black people whole in this country. Um, I mean, hey, reparations is 
always on the table. But back to Donald Trump. Uh, Donald Trump decided that he was going to be, uh, again, just just like, you know, see, hey, let's go full racist, see if they like it. Um, here he is speaking to this uh, conservative black federation gala, and he starts off by talking about how bright the lights are in the room. Good. These lights are so bright in my eyes that I can't see too many people out there. But uh, I can only see the black ones. I can't see any white ones, you see? That's how far I've come. That's how far I've come. That's a long, that's a long way, isn't it? Wait, what was the second? Was was he code switching? What's he doing there? What was that second? That's a long way. He's... (laughs) He's basically, he is not only mocking black people, I guess, like, that he can only see them under the lights. And then he's like, I've come a long way, sort of admitting that I'm a racist. Ah, uh, okay. And look at wow. me. Hey. I hadn't seen that one. I'd, I'd seen the other one I assume you're about to play. I won't, I won't spoil it. Oh, yeah. But... This, is, this is fun. So now he's decided that he is connecting to the black community in the United States because he has criminal indictments. Uh, and then I got indicted a second time and a third time and a fourth time. And a lot of people said that that's why the black people like me, because they have been hurt so badly and discriminated against. And they actually viewed me as I'm being discriminated against. It's, it's been pretty amazing. You did the crimes. You did the things. You, you did the things that you're in trouble for. That it's, it's the opposite. It's the opposite of the thing you're saying right now. Absolutely. It's not unjust. It is 100% justified. Like, I mean, he might as well be saying suddenly they're treating me like I'm black, which is effectively what he wanted to say. Yeah. Um, except not because as, you, as you're saying, he did him. He's not just unjustly being, it's not a stop and frisk situation. Um. Mm-hmm. Although he probably should be stopped in for us to see. So here was um, Representative Byron Donald responding of to like this clear, blatant, in your face racism that Trump is just on full display, love it, hamming it up to, I don't know if you saw the audience, pretty white, like definitely conservative black Americans in that audience, but also a lot of like more white people than you would want at like a black conservative gala. Um, okay. Here's Byron Dodd. Congressman, it sounds like Donald Trump was implying that he can win black voters because they get indicted all the time, too. Is that what he was saying? Well, I think it's in part of that. It's part of it, Kristen. Look, it was a great night, Friday night in Columbia, South Carolina. The president was really just enjoying himself. It was a great celebration for black conservatives across our country. But let's be very clear. Our economy is a mess. Our border is completely unsecured. These things are causes of major concerns for black voters like it is for every voter in our country. But then when you layer on the fact that, yes, this is political persecution from the Department of Justice and from radical DAs throughout our country, this is something similar that black people had to deal with the, with the justice system themselves. And so their their look of it is real simple. Well, dang, if the government's going after him with foolishness, uh, he can't be that bad, especially considering the fact that Joe Biden is terrible at his job. Oh, God. <laughs> so, so he's basically saying the exact, he's doubling down on it. Yeah. Yeah. If they're going to go after him. They can go after, you know, us, even though they already do for like, you know, uh, ridiculous things and, um, you know, tail us. If they can tail him home for in his car, they're going to tail. What? Yeah, that's wild. He did the same thing when uh, his mugshot came out, Donald Trump. He was saying, like, uh, I saw these conservatives posting, like, oh, it looks like he just got the black vote and all this kind of stuff. I was like, I, are you implying for being a criminal? I'm just like, I'm so blown away at how normalized, like, the right has gotten with just, like, shit that, like, you know, a decade ago, people would have been rightfully calling out. Are you spreading the anti-Semitic great replacement conspiracy? that's weird are you saying you wouldn't fly in a plane because the pilot was a black woman that's super weird and fucked up this is like this is just you know common sense very old-timey racist shit and now it's just normal again to be like well it's dei though right because right. crt and racist babies and so but, but that's yeah. the whole thing about like diversity to the right like they love diversity so long as you know women and people of color know their place and their place is also you will be the punchline to every single joke and if you can't laugh well then you're woke and you're ridiculous and oh my god can you take it we're being canceled like that is it and it it's like in the real world it's like yeah okay if 
once we have reparations, once we have an end to redlining, once we have, you know, um, fairness in employment, once you have secured voting rights, I don't know, make a racist joke. You know what I'm saying? Let's see how it goes. Right. Like all things being equal, but that's not what it is. This is about like, again, I love my little African-Americans. Where's my African-Americans? There they are. And he's just like, they're collectible items. <laughs> Pretty good, right? Um, you yeah. know what else is good? You, Lance, um, everybody, or you, tell everybody how they can find you. Follow your work. Uh, if you enjoy the sounds that come out of my mouth hole, please check out youtube.com slash the surf times. I also do uh, comedy and documentaries at youtube.com slash the surf TV. I'm on most social media at the surf TV that includes the TikTok and uh, that, uh, what is it, Hitler's Bonker, the app, the 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 one that uh, Twitter, Twitter, on, on Twitter too. And uh, yeah. Oh my God. At I the just, surf TV everywhere. Uh, so I just went to your channel and suddenly I'm seeing you doing four years ago, Stephen Chowder. Oh, that was that was a fun time. That, that was, was uh... <laughs> dude. I've been working on an Andrew Tate. Speaking of which, so um, we should we should link up, Lance. I hope yeah. this is the beginning of a beautiful friendship and crossover. Me too. Me um, too. And you're wonderful. And thank you for being on. Uh, I, all the same things. I, what you said for a second time. <laughs> okay. Take good care, and you. You people out there, you people, you take good care too. And I'm going to read some of your comments and then fuck off into the night. Uh, Donald James, uh, thank you for being a member on YouTube. Says, I'll be there in Sacramento, Fran. You and Matt, Hilary. Hilaire. Oh, thanks. Um, I appreciate you. Yes, yeah, Sacramento, March 17th. Tickets for JessicaFiorentini.com or PunchlineSack.com, I believe. Um, B Cat K on YouTube with a little. Uh, I have to put this up a little uh, sunglasses emoji and an ice cream emoji Biden when facilitating genocide. Indeed. Indeed. Uh, JL, thank you so much for that super chat. And then <laughs> Serge Heiko says first CBD oil soon. Harry's razors will come calling. No, really congrats. You deserve more sponsors. Thank you so much. Yes. Everybody sunset lake CBD.com Frantifa F R A N T I F A for 20% off. Um, I'm telling you, there's good stuff. And uh, Sunset Lake, hi, is in the chat. Uh, Lenny Power says, Sebe Day, homes don't get restricted, Fran. <laughs> I know, I should say Sebe Day. Yeah, I might get canceled. I very might well get canceled. Um, let's see. Lenny Power says, Fran and Lance are the oldest 20 year olds ever. I know, crazy. Um, Robert, thank you for your super chat. Says, face it, the science isn't there for brave new world and oligarchs can't agree who Big Brother would be, so The Handmaid's Tale it is. I think that's a very uh, cogent point. They are like, should I build my bunker or should I vie for power? I don't know. Bunker, power. Um, let's just control people's bodies. Um, Paper Dragon on Twitch. If women in red states are mad as hell, why do many of them keep voting the way their husbands do? I mean, we will see. Look, I have... I think there is a silent majority and I think a lot of them are in are women in red states. And I think a lot of them will be breaking with their husbands around the GOP, but that's me just being like still believing somehow believing in people. I don't know. Um, Jimmy Voss says Alabama needs children to work the mines. Yeah, I guess. Are there mines anymore? Um, Jerry McLean, giving birth alone is a huge expense in America, not free. I know. I couldn't. I was like, yo, I was in and out of this hospital super quick. I Like, what? How much could it have cost? It was a lot. It was, I mean, it was way more than I thought it would be. Gary Cooper, Donnie said he supports a 16-week ban because that's four months. Six, four months. 16 weeks is less than four months, but nobody's asking Donnie to do arithmetic, of course. Ugh. Um, still... Del Sol Verde on YouTube, hate crimes based on sexual orientation recorded their highest totals in the last five years and increased by 10% over the year 2021. Disgusting. Doom Cats says, also puberty blockers are not used exclusively by the trans, ace, non-binary community. 100%. Thank you for reminding us of that. Um, used for all kinds of stuff. And and to, to deny people any of these medicines or, or um, regimens or care, like, yeah. Again, with abortion rights, it's the same thing. Transgender care, gender affirming care is health care. Abortion care is health care, period. Um, Texture Plunky says there's a box of, box of masks on the table. Oh, in front of Taylor. Um, 
And Blue Room says there's even an extra day of Black History Month this year. Yeah, the shortest month, but there's an extra day just for Trump to get in that in insane little racist tirade. And with that, guys, let's do it. Oh, man, I didn't bring up the fart song, but I'm bringing it up now. If you guys have not been subject to it, I apologize. Speaking of masks, get yours ready. Thanking everyone who's a patron at $10 or more or at least the new ones. I will thank everyone later. I remember AMA tomorrow for all the patrons and members on YouTube. I'm going to figure out a way to post it on Twitch. Um, stand by. But until then, let's thank everyone with the fart song. It says, yay, Franny Fio. Basset Hounds running in slow motion or Corgi belly rubs. Uh, Corgi belly rubs for sure. Frank Morningtree, thank you for gifting a tier one sub to Mike Boy for Mayor. And Big Hoob, resubscribe with Prime a few days ago. Nemo, 1870 Dragon, resubscribe for one month of tier three. Thank you so much. Calm Like a Bomb did the same, 22 months strong. Patty Pagan, resubscribe for one month of tier one. Looney Tunes 9000 says, great job on your leftist mafia appearance last night. Thank you so much. Resubscribe at tier one. I should share that on my YouTube channel, huh? I shall. Oh, crap. Oh, boy. Or are we done? I just wanted to thank... Jonathan Cook, thank you so much, Big Tipper, Jonathan Cook, and new patron at $10 or more, Preston Kroll, you're amazing, you're one of the sexiest people alive right now, thanks to everyone who helps this show happen, Paige Omek, Maximilian Inhoff, editor Andy Vasoyan, we stream Tuesdays and Fridays, 1pm Pacific, 4pm Eastern, follow the show on all the things, on Twitter, uh, at Bituation Pod, on TikTok and Instagram, at Bituation Room, and remember to fight the power, to fuck the patriarchy, to free Palestine, and don't just bitch about it, be about it. Bye.